Hello, Fred. This is your old friend Joseph speaking to you from an almost completed Northwest Overton Street home. It's a beautiful, warm, almost Indian summer weather September day. And we are answering your tape with remarkable speed. We just got it the other day, and lo and behold, we played it for several mystery guests of our own, two of which have since departed, leaving one mystery guest who we shall introduce to you later on. <laughs> it has been a very, very busy summer for us, and uh, we have just uh, almost had to go back to school in order to recover. Elsa's schedule is very light. She will tell you more about that later on. We were quite excited about the telegram which you sent. It was a harbinger of very good news since Elsa's show was a smash. Uh, it's one day half sold out and they're s continuing sales. But I, I don't want to ruin that because Elsa would like very much, I'm sure, to tell you how big her head was <laughs> <laughs> on that day. I'm calling her Big Head because it seems to fit the whole situation very nicely, although by now it's kind of returned to its normal size, which isn't small, but it never has been very small. It matched her other half very, very nicely. Uh, Elsa has some grand ideas of introducing this little program with some kind of um, uh, trio a la the uh, Andrew sisters, <laughs> but I said we really couldn't match what uh, you and Denny did on the other side of the Pacific. Uh, we're really not that, we're not tuned into that sort of thing over here, but I think what I would like to do is just to hand it over to Elsa so that she can tell you what a wonderful person she is. <laughs> Hi, Fred. This is me. And I would like to say that my husband is teasing me a little since Sunday. And I am as humble as I ever was. In honor... Oh, how humble that is, <laughs> Freddie. <laughs> I did have a day of joy. And your telephone call that was giving me your cable was certainly part of that joy. It was just an overwhelming surprise. The whole day was beautiful, but believe me, my head has not gotten out of hand, and I still make Joe's lunch, and I still scratch his head. Huh? What did I do? I forgot a napkin once in his lunch. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but before I go into any other news, of which there's tons, I would like to say that the cable was absolutely overwhelming. And I did pick it up, the written version at the gallery. And it just was a wonderful surprise and very, very thoughtful of both of you. Uh, my exhibit was wonderful and fun and all that. Wasn't that major of a deal. I felt like a princess getting a cable from halfway around the world. But in any case, I loved it. But at this time, I would like to say that upon receipt of your $50 under separate cover, um, certainly I would not accept such a fee. My drawings in the show ranged from $20 to $75, and that's a retail price, which means that I would never sell to my own family anyway, let alone at the retail price. So I will not accept that money. It's very gracious and generous, but I wouldn't do it. So all I can say is upon selecting a drawing, which I would like to make a special drawing, since many of the major pieces in the show did sell, uh, it's likely there won't be any pieces left which I would want to send you. So it's possible I will recreate or create a new one of the strong pieces and send you. If I find that the shipping and postage is very expensive, Perhaps I'd take a little out of the $50 for the postage. Other than that, I would like to send it back, thanking you warmly, but saying no 
I can't accept that. Um, I will come later and tell you about our house and my exhibit and all the rest, but first let me tell you about our other two mystery guests to build you up for the biggie who is to come. Um, on Friday night, Joe and I had gone up to Tacoma for Lisa's bas mitzvah. By the way, I, I'd like to say Lisa is unrecognizable. The little tubby cutie that you remember has blossomed into a tall, gracious, lovely young woman, just as poised and sweet and attractive as any young girl you'd meet. And it was a most, most pleasant evening. Um, she did beautifully, of course, in Warnick tradition. Poor thing, she can't help but do well with all that burden of being a Warnick. But she is a lovely girl, and we are very pleased to see her all grown up. But on that night, who should come but the Neretics from Seattle to announce that they, for the first time in history, were coming down to Portland for my exhibit. And, of course, I was just ecstatic. So they came down Saturday night and stayed, and we had them for brunch Sunday, and they came out just loaded with flowers for me at, at the exhibit on Sunday. It was a big treat to have them in my home for the first time. They look just the same. They still kiss a lot and act very much the same. Um, they brought canned salmon, which of course is a real Neredic goodie. Um, but the big treat was that your tape had come that Saturday afternoon. So we sat over our blintzes and chicken livers and listened to Fred, and it was just a thrill. Your laughter sounded like you, and everything about you sounded like you. And of course, they heard Soldier's voice for the first time and were just delighted. Uncle Phil kind of swooned, just like Joe did. Um, she has such a beautiful voice. So they were our two mystery guests, but because of the hustle bustle of that morning and my having to get out there to the gallery, we were unable to really relax and do the tape. So they departed, and they are not with us tonight except in spirit. But we do have the biggie, and she is with us now, and she is the queen of all mystery guests. And at this moment, I will turn the tape over to her. Thank you very much for the big build-up. Is this all right? Dear Fred, it was really, <laughs> it really was a thrill hearing your, hearing your voice uh, on the tape the other day and to hear Suljas and Denny's. Of course, I knew you'd mentioned that you were going to send it, but it really was a wonderful thrill to hear your voice. You sounded just like your old self again. And uh, I hadn't forgotten how your voice sounded, and it really just was a thrill to hear your voice and to be with Elsa and Joe and the Neretics listening to you at the same time. It's... Uh, it's been really exciting for me coming up here. I, um, as Elsa said, I came up for the Bas Mitzvah and uh, I've just been having a wonderful time with all the grandchildren, uh, starting with the, the new baby that I hadn't seen, almost a year old, all the way up to Todd, who's a great big guy. He's six foot tall and is built like a Warnick, but looks like a Thal. And Lisa, of course, was just a beautiful, uh, sweet young lady. She uh, seemed so composed and did a beautiful job on her uh, performance in the service, as did the rest of the family. And then to come over here, I came over here Saturday to to attend uh, the opening of the show, uh, uh, Elsa's show. And um, it, that, again, was another thrill for me to see all of Elsa's drawings up on the wall and uh, throughout the rooms of this gallery and to see people 
admiring them, and then I would sit and rest my feet for a while and hear pleasant remarks about the different drawings that they didn't know I was a little spy listening to them because they didn't know I was Elsa's, the artist's mother, you know. So I enjoy that too. And uh, to see people buying the, the pictures like that and admiring them was really the biggest thrill. So it's just been a wonderful experience being up here this time with, with uh, Elsa and Joe and being out to the gallery and meeting all her, their wonderful friends and uh, hearing all the compliments about Elsa, and I'm sending um, in another letter the um, Ida, the um, article that was written by an artist who um, uh, interviewed Elsa and uh, gave his opinion of her work. You'll be interested to read that, I know. I know I was really thrilled because I felt uh, one artist criticizing another really means even a little more. Now, I don't know if you know anything about their house here. It is just um, like being in fantasy land. It's just super duper. They're getting it painted on the outside and fixed up all around. But the inside is so interesting and so, uh, what, nouveau art, would you say? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it's... I'll have to turn it over to them to tell you, let them know about your house. Oh. Now what, right here? <coughs> um, about the, the family up in Tacoma, I mentioned that Todd was, who was 16 years old and just a big young fellow, plays the piano almost as well as you do, and we were just thrilled to hear you play the Rhapsody in Blue. I uh, think you did a beautiful job on keeping it up, and um, I hope you continue, and remember now, if there's any songs you want us to send over, I told you before, let me know, but you, s you uh, really are keeping up with your music, and I'm glad for you. Um, Todd plays the piano very well. He plays in a band, and he's also playing saxophone in the high school orchestra, and um, there's a chance that the uh, stadium orchestra may go to Vienna next summer. They've been invited, and if they raise the money, they will go. So they're all excited about that. Mark is, um, um, is still small, but he's starting to grow now, and he's a spry little guy, real sharp, he, uh, when he first saw me, he says, um, he said something about, uh, when are you going, what are you going to do next Friday night? He says, Lisa's busy with a little thing, you know. But he's really very sharp. And Lisa, of course, I told you, was just a sweet, beautiful little young lady. And Craig is um, 10 years old. And he looks like Mark, only he wears glasses, and he's a sharp, smart little boy, too. And uh, Alan's children are darling. John is a little younger than Craig, and he's handsome and uh, looks has the same face, except that he uh, is a little bigger. Lori is a little doll. She's just as cute as she can be and a little mother to the new baby. And then Neil, the six-year-old, st just started school, and he is a combination of Sandy's family and our family. And um, then um, the new baby has big black eyes like olives, and his mouth is like um, Sandy's family. But he's a very active little fellow, and he walks around now, just started to walk a few weeks before I came, and he is just adorable. So I've been getting acquainted with all the children. Now I've been here these few days and I'm going to go back to Tacoma tomorrow in time to spend the holiday 
the Rosh Hashanah and stay the whole week over there and stay for Yom Kippur and then come go back home to Grandma the day after Yom Kippur. She says she's lonesome for me, and so I'll feel that I'll have to go right back. And we'll have visited up north for about five weeks, which has been wonderful. So it's really been a thrill, this whole vacation up here. And Alan and, and Jack and Lily and, and Sandy look great. They look just wonderful. And uh, your father is fat as ever. And um, everybody in Tacoma asks about you, as I mentioned in other letters. And it's been a wonderful experience being up here. Saw Lawrence and Susan, and they look fine. And they said David is going to be on his way. I guess now he's on his way to Australia now. I'll be signing off now to turn it over to the <coughs> person in charge of the big <laughs> of the big uh, <laughs> the manufacturing company. <laughs> anyway, it's been fun. Bye now, and love to all of you. Well, you should have been here this summer, Fred, because the house was just something else. It seems that we uh, got a contractor to rebuild our, our garage, which is uh, attached to the house and has sort of a deck over it. And over a period of years, it was never tended to. Correspondingly, the uh, uh, mud sill and all that started to rot, and we had to have that replaced because uh, everything was leaking. Uh, down to the garage, that is. And we we uh, talked around and finally found some Claude who said he could do it and do a nifty job for us, and we agreed, and he started the work. Well, as it went on, we found out after he'd finished that he was really a shoddy character and really wasn't a very good craftsman and didn't uh, do anything except... Uh, well, he did some things that we don't have to replace, but almost everything he did we have to replace. Uh, it leaks. After all, the, the very day that I paid him off, it rained, <laughs> and the thing leaked, and we were in for trouble from then on. Of course, as soon as that happened, uh, we were planned to have the house painted just as soon as he finished, so that everything went smoothly, because after the painting, then the landscaping was to be done, and after that, it would have been uh, September, and we'd have been finished. Well, here it is, the middle of September, and they still haven't finished painting, let alone starting the landscaping. So that little uh, stupidity on our part for not checking closer on this guy, I guess, cost us plenty in money and also in time. We just are running out of time. And uh, the house, of course, will look very nice when it's through, but it just will... Don't buy an old Korean house, Fred, I'll tell you. <laughs> If the Korean contractors are like they are here, the small contractors, you're going to be in trouble. I can tell you all about it. I keep telling Elsa, say, you like to write, don't you? Well, Elsa and I, or at least me, think that this whole episode is so funny that I'd like to write a book about it because it went from one stupidity after another, uh, never ending, including Elsa having her car stolen from in front of the house and then uh, borrowing the uh, the other second contractor's truck to go out do the groceries, consequently or subsequently opening the door and having somebody run into the door, ripping it off, and it was like that all summer. <laughs> and I, I was uh, to the point where every time I also called, I dropped the phone. It was, uh, you know, I was really kind of nervous. I was uh, at a point where I told Elsa, "Well, don't call me, no matter what happens. I I really don't want to know." until I get home and had uh, a couple of scotches or something. But it's continuing on. We're having a beautiful, beautiful fall. And if it wasn't for that, I think that I would have just given up because the house was not even half painted and it was uh, like two months behind schedule. Nothing went right. Nothing has gone smoothly, evenly, and schedule, except uh, I think the landscaping would because our services. 
But uh, when you get here, if you do in 72, it will be finished. So you'll be able to see it without any of its turmoil and trauma. You will see it as it should have been seen by us this year.